click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about one topic on query processing that is how to join to relations and how that will affect our relational cost on a database management system. We will discuss nested loop join and block nested loop join first elaboratively with their techniques and then compare the cost accommodation in both of these cases. <music> Nested loop join is just having two joinings by the nested loops. That means one for loop inside that another for loop. So the outer one is considered to be the outer relation and the inner loop will contain the inner relation. So we can denote this nested loop join as so it is more like theta joining to relation. When we perform nested loop join, it just starts with an outer loop within each tuple of the outer loop, then go for every tuple of the outer loop that it matches the inner loop. If it is, has got a duplicate value, then it just eliminate one and state one. And if there is an repeated value or the new value, then it will add the fill to this existing relation. So in this way, nested loop join not only provides the better way than natural join and also any left outer join and right outer join, it just gives an exact compact way of having two relations joined with each other, having one value for each of the attribute, not just having the null values and also not having any duplicate values repeated to it. So if there are two tuples, TR and TS that is belonging from TR relations and tuple from S relations and we join among these two relations with a theta join then we can have TR and TS as one unique for R and S both. Now unlike any literal and linear file scanning we can have this nested loop join as one complementary to the natural join which uses a linear file scanning technique. In nested loop join, we first take the first attribute of the first tuple on the router relation and then take each of the inner attribute of this relation and then combine these values with this one. So the first attribute with every attribute on the relation, the second attribute with every attribute on the inner relation, like in this way, it will compare an NR into NS number of attributes that is present in the relation. So if there is an NR number of relation or the attributes in the relation R and NS number of attributes in the relation S, then it will give an NR and NS product to have the number of attributes in the resultant set. Now if we divide this numbers of attributes in blocks for relation R and relation S, then we have at most NR into NS plus PR that is the block of the outer relation not the inner one because the outer relation here is considering for the lookup on this relational state so the outer relation block will be added up with this number of attributes product to have the exact block transfer of this resultant information. Now if we are talking about the blocks, then we will have at most BR plus BS number of blocks in our resultant relation. Now if there are the BR number of six to have the action to the NR relation, then we will have NR plus PR number of six to access the our resultant relation. So in this way we can calculate the cost of a nested loop join based on this NR, BR and TR information. We will do that later but first let us know that how to perform this nested loop join inside an SQL query. Now we will perform TR and TS or R and S nested loop join with each other. Now for each tuple TR that belongs to R in the relation R, then we need to begin this loop. That means the outer relation we are considering as R. 
Now we need to, need to perform that for each tuple, we will consider each tuple in the particular S relation, which is the inner relation. Now that we are taking each tuple in this relation R, and there are numerous tuples in relation S. So every tuple, and I will match and create this combination to check the theta join condition. So if it satisfies the TRTS, that means TI, TN, TI, T1, TI, T2, TI, T3, like this, and next one I will go for TI plus 1, T1, TI plus 1, T2, in this way. So I will take every pair to satisfy the theta join or not. So if it satisfies the theta join, that means there is no attribute in the left relation that has not any value in the right relation, and vice versa. So we will make the next step. Now, if there is such pair T or TS that satisfies the theta join, then we will add T or product to TS, that means the pair T or TS to the resultant set. So first, it will check for each tuple T or TI, T1, TI, T2, TI, T3, then it will end it. After that, it will start with TI plus 1, T1, TI plus 1, T2, like this one, then TI plus 2, until and unless it has finished with every tuple with outer relation. Now my outer loop will also end. So in this way we can perform the nested loop join of two of the relations in an SQL query. Now we will look for the cost that we can calculate for this nested loop joining two relations. Now see if two of the relations both fit in the internal memory, then we will have BR plus BS that is one block for having the TRs and one block for having the TS. So my BR plus BS now becomes two six because BR is one block having all the memory or the tuple at this entirely stated in one. Now, if there is only the inner query that is supported by the fit into the internal memory, but the outer is not, then we need two blocks for this outer and zero blocks for this inner. So now again, two plus zero, it will be two six. So whether both fit in the internal memory or both have this external memory or this outer relation has a block into the internal memory where the inner relation stores into the disk block, we will have two six to perform the query. Now compare the processing on the query. Say suppose we have nr equals to 5000 and ns equals to 10,000. So that is student and text relationship. Student relationship will contain the ID name, the total credit, and the text relationship will consider the student ID, the course name, and the department name. So all together we'll have the ID, student name, the department name, total credit, and the course name as a result of a student and text theta joining. So if we have NR into NS, that means the number of tuples in the student text theta join relation will contain NR into NS, that is 50 into 10 to the power 6 relations or records in it. Now what is the number of 6 that we can have? Now, if the outer relation or the student relation stays into the memory while the inner relation or the text relation stays into this memory or the disk block, then we'll have 5000 number of entries for this outer as it already stays in the memory. So after having 15 to 10 to the power 6 pairs of tuples, we need to mention the word pairs of tuples because Tuples means a single tuple. Pairs of tuples means this much pairs. That means the double will be the value for the tuple. So 5000 for this inner, for the 6, and for NS, we will have the BR plus BS into NR. So the 5000 plus 400 and plus the 100 blocks 
that is the blocks for the BS. Now we will have as Now this much 6 for the internal one, also for the outer one, we will need 5000 as the queries as it already stays in the memory, plus 100, that is 5106 for the outer one. So altogether we will need this number of 6. So see, number of six is greater when we have a large number of records on a nested loop join. Now, when we want to perform this one in the word scenario that the entire inner relation is in the main memory, but the outer relation stays in the secondary memory or the disk block. Then what happened? Then we have NSS 10,000. So we need to perform 10,000 into 100 plus 400 blocks for this outer one. So as a result, we will have 6 for the outer one and also 10,000 plus 400, that is 10,400 for the inner one. So we can see that in the worst scenario, we are having this. In the best scenario, we will have only two six to improve our performance because we can have this as a block one or a block joining other than being in an unlisted loop joining. So when we are talking about a block joining, we are more oriented that transferring the data from block wise, not a tuple wise. Now we will perform a block nested loop joining to see that how the result will improve on this block joining on the cost of 6 and then cost of the number of attributes. So the main problem is if the buffer is too small to hold in any of this memory or the relation into the main memory, then it is always good for having a block nested loop joining. In a block nested loop joining, not for having for each tuple tier, we will go for for each block that will consist of tuple. So now we will go for a block wise move. The outer block will contain the outer relational tuples and for each block, I will consider the blocks of the inner ones. So block I will be paired with block I plus one, block I plus two, block I plus three, like this one. So first the block I will be paired with block one of this inner one, block I block two, block I block three, Next step, it will have block I plus one block on, block I plus two block two, and like this one. So we can have performed this block nested join to improve the querying efforts and the processing of the query will be smooth and also cost effective. So first let us do that how to perform a block nested loop join. See, we are telling that for each block beer, that means we are not anymore considering the tuples. We are more related with this block that will consist of the tuples. Now for the outer block, we will again have to pair it with the inner block or each of the block in the inner block. Now that we have entered the block, so we need to consider the block wise tuple. So here we are not anymore looking at the relation, but the block for the tuple references. Now for each tuple tier in BR, we need to perform and compare it with the pair tuple TS in BS. So first we are considering the block wise joining. Next in the block we will have the joining on the tuple level. So as a whole the cost performance will be affected on the blocks not the tuples. So as the tuple will be joined we are joining the tuples block wise.
So in again now tier TS if satisfies theta join, then we will add tier TS to our result. So this is the structure of a block nested loop join. Now we will compare in each of the case that what will be the cost difference with this block nested loop join and nested loop join. So first we will start with the words case. We have seen that in the words case of that both the relation are storing into the disk blocks, not the inner memory. We had nr into ns plus br plus nr plus br number of blocks to transfer it. Now we will have br into bs plus br number of blocks that is much lesser than this considering each of the tuple. See the tuples are joined at block level so we cannot just calculate the cost on the tuples while having a block nested loop join. So now the number of blocks are considered not the number of tuples. So see what it will reduce to? It will reduce to 400 into 100 plus 400 that is 40,406 only to transfer it. And if it is the second one that is the inner one that is storing into the buffer then we will have 100 into 400 plus 100 that is 40,106. Now in the base scenario that both these tables lies in the buffer memory or the main memory then we will have Five hundred blocks six. As it is, we have the blocks of this secondary one and primary one both stored in this one. Now this forty four thousand and four hundred or the forty thousand one hundred will be added up with the tuples that we have and also for the tuples. So this way also it will be much 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 lesser if we compare with in the nested loop join. Now what we can do to improve this block nested loop join and nested loop join. Now if a join can be performed on a natural join basis in this nested loop join then it will be much more easier to have other than having the theta join. Also, if in the outer relation, if there are m number of entries and if we support m minus 2 number of entries as the outer index, then the reduction will be br2 br divided by m minus 2 because the region is now halved. So one block for m minus 2, another block plus m minus 2 or this m together. Now we will have BR divided by M minus 2 other than having the BR number of blocks. Otherwise, if we can scan the inner loop once forward, once backward, that is alternatively. So say suppose for the outer loop, we will have first scan the inner loop forwardly. So we will have the pair and now when we will scan the next loop on the next tuple on the inner loop, backwardly so if there is any immediate match on the first loop and the second loop then it can be eliminated and the chance of this higher repetition is more while having this nested loop join. So if we want to scan this loop on the inner relation forwardly and backwardly alternative then we can perform a better way. And the last one is if we use an index while having the nested loop join, then also using the index it will be much easier to join these two relations. So they are the four improvement areas that we can perform in both nested loop join and the block nested loop joins. So that is all for nested loop join today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.